So welcome everyone for the first call of 2024. Um, what is the mission about this uh, this working group? Uh, the DSAR Funding Working Group is a forum for cross-project dialogue. Uh, we want to uh, generate ideas and 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 collaborate. Um, we have also like a free marketing uh, uh, um, concept to share with everyone. Um, what could we do together um, is um, to capture 2% of the crypto market cap for the advancement of society through science. Um, this, I will explain you briefly now where this 2% for DSI slogan comes from. Um, basically, if you look at the average uh, expenditure of GDP or, uh, internationally, it is 2% of GDP that is put into scientific research by nation states. Um, and there has been a presentation uh, about a year ago by Juan Benet, who said that we are actually on the path of um, reaching this 2% uh, or reaching a market cap of the crypto um, uh, space that would allow, <clears throat> if we put just a tiny fraction of this value into sp funding of scientific research, we could reach the level of nation states. And actually, if we take this 2%, which is the average spending, you see that, um, and this depends on the sources where you do the math, but um, we basically could reach, by just doubling the current uh, market cap of the crypto space, uh, we could reach a funding that is matching the, the funding levels of the US for science. If you compare the different uh, 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 sci largest science funders worldwide, uh, 2% um, means basically United States here is, is at the top with uh, something like um, 120 billion US dollars. Um, and then it's followed by uh, China and the European Union. And then here's Germany as another, as an individual small comparable, comparing the, to the United States nation. Uh, it's quite less than that. So 120 billion US dollars uh, spent for science, though, has to be spent also wisely. And we should understand how this can be done in a in an effective way, uh, in a in a way that is also constructive and it is complementary um, and not redundant to what already is being spent uh, worldwide, right? So this is why this working group is for. We want to uh, create new ideas, educate each other, uh, and and also uh, share this narrative and bring it out there because <coughs> currently the crypto protocols are not uh, having embedded anything that necessarily automatically. Um, allocates money to public goods. It is uh, something that we need to uh, also make um, an advertisement for. So what we want to have is we want to build credibility. Uh, we want to uh, create the narratives uh, to convince the blockchain space to create new ways of funding, funding into science in a decentralized way. That means that we are not an organization here that, that this dictates how this works. Every individual organization, every individual protocol will have to find their own approach, but we can make recommendations. Um, and so we don't want to stop at funding the status quo. This would be actually very ineffective if we are just funding money back into the existing institutions. We can now also fund our own infrastructure. So this is why the call is not only for uh, funders, but it's specifically also for projects in the DSI space that are uh, building their own tooling. And we want that these are tools that will be used by um, by decentralized science funders. Uh, there is a group, currently a Telegram group, that you can join with this QR code here, and the link has been widely shared. This is the uh, place where coordination will happen, um, where we will openly discuss uh, agendas and we do research on different subgroups that have been formed in the last call and they are already established there in this channel. So you can you can join and check it out. Um, for today, the agenda looks the following. Um, and this is a proposal for this call and we can then see how this works in the next ones. So we have two presentations, uh, the first by um, Sönke Bartling, um, who is a co-founder uh, with me. Um, he founded actually Blockchain for Science and then I joined. And he will speak about um, funding in DSI Commons. This is the name of the working group that we have established. We just went ahead now uh, because still there is little traction on the Telegram group. So we are having the first slot, you know, we captured. Uh, we have also Joshua Bate uh, who 
who will speak briefly then about how this could be governed. Um, and then we'll uh, allow some time in the end, uh, which might be just 10 minutes, uh, uh, to have an open discussion and individuals may give updates. Um, and I also want to announce already the next agenda, which is a, a call for submissions and also for networking uh, before um, you know we, we start this. Uh, so the next call um, in roughly a month will then focus on social platforms for DSI funding and collaboration. Um, and, and from here, I would suggest that we are having the general chat in the Telegram group to come up with proposals for what should be the priorities for the upcoming months. Um, and so what we ha have here as a proposed structure is one call, um, one, one part of the call focused on a, a rather longer presentation where we can curate also several uh, participants uh, contributing. And then following that, um, we have some open free discussion. Uh, with that, uh, I stop my introduction. I invite you to, to write in the channel, um, in, in the chat, if there's any uh, things that you want to share. I will also review the notes document that I shared there in the chat um, and so that we can come back to this at the end of the call and with this i i stop sharing and i invite zunke to to start his presentation you're muted So thank you very much for the introduction. And I'm going to like talk about the decentralized science commons. So the commons in terms of like, you all know creative commons. So it's not the blockchain commons of all DSI, whatever. So, but we want to like create some guidelines and licenses um, accordingly to the creative commons uh, licenses. So take commons in this like angle. So in, in DSI, we are in a unique position. DSA is young, so that blockchain and science is named together. It's like six to seven years old. And this was a weirdo idea in the beginning, and now it's a real thing, but it's still very young, okay? And what's different from other science revolutions in the past, and me and Martin and the OGs here, we went through a few revolutions. Open science is popping up all the time. There was like science 2.0. Web 2.0 for science and like all these ideas and uh, but what's what's what what the problem was in these they never controlled money right the flow of money so whatever the funders told scientists to do they did right and if the NIH didn't tell them to to publish in uh, things different from established journals scientists never did it right so but at the moment. Um, the NIH told them to like uh, not publish your results in closed journals, but open access journals. All the publishers and scientists moved from uh, closed access journals to open access journals. So just by the funder telling the scientists and the research institutes some conditions so, so, so in, for the way they should like behave as scientists, they could really change the behavior of the scientists. And in this side, we are in a similar situation because in the first first science revolution, we have actually money that we can decide how how we distribute the money and what the rules are um, that goes along with this money. So it's because I know you all mean the market caps of the blockchains, and then we have research DAOs that actually distributed money. So in Web 2.0, there was never money involved like ResearchGate or Social Network for Science, you still had the old science funders, right? So this is a very potential situation. But what, what these high community should definitely not do and not end up would be to distribute money to, for example, DAOs to the very same old scientific conduct. Yeah? This, was, this, this would not be getting the point of DSI, right? It would be an opportunity missed. What's good, like having research DAOs routing the money through like all institutes without telling them to change anything, right? And this would really miss out on a great opportunity. And then the DSI community should be like careful not to be hijacked by all stakeholders. For example, publishers, they have this nice 
lobbying guys that come and have a beer with you and it happened to us at one of the first blockchain for science conferences they are very very friendly people they would basically want to influence you and like maybe there should be a role of journals in TSI or they will come up with all, all these kind of ideas they always do it they always have people that look into new fields and see what's going on there yeah and TSI should not be solely driven by non-scientists it's good i mean there's in this idea is like fields for people who can like build tokens who can create DAOs, who can put up web pages who can do marketing who can build platforms so to say web three platforms but it should be like there should be also be scientists involved yeah so it should be because they know how science is being done what the pain points of science are and so on so speaking of the pain points so what's wrong with science well it's TLDR. I mean, all of you have some experiences, opinions, and everything. But what's important here is to mention that there is not just one thing that is wrong in science. It's not if we fix peer review, all science will be fine forever, right? It's not that we, if we have open data, we will like be all sharing data for good, and there will be no data manipulations. Yeah, it will like all things in science are connected. Yeah, so we have to like see what we can actually change i mean some examples what's wrong in science you all know this photoshopping of like western blood results or that you can't like rely on like mice results because it's basically very biased i mean the scientists look biased at the results yeah or this like just like faking some excel sheets by even Ivy League professors, and it was in the news in the last months, in the last years, they basically added some data, did some p-value hacking, and all this kind of, I mean, you all know these examples. So the, the important thing here is, these are just the things that we read about, that end up as a newspaper article, but this is just the tip of the iceberg. Everybody of us who have spent some research knows that basically looking a little bit biased at data, to say the least in the least offending manner is 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 a common practice in science right so you can basically tell us your story about what your experience are with science so we see a lot of potential to improve stuff here so the design community should or will develop guidelines and best best practices that will be followed by design science funders and scientists in the future to so basically overcome this limitation of the current science practice and if i may as i mentioned it is like we basically took the logo and the idea from the creative common project so sort of licenses for design right or thing how would you design science and research with the current technological means without legacy cultures and without legacy stakeholders just like from a blank table. There's no science culture, nothing, no peer review. How would you come up with a science culture? Right? So I think this is a good way of thinking of it, yeah? And we have, I mean, there's a unique opportunity that we have at our hands here. So how would we do that? We don't know exactly, but we have a lot of ideas and I'm going to show you some of our ideas and visions. First of all, who should do this? Well, it should be a community process, right? And we are in the blockchain space, so it should be decentralized. But as you all know, even the most decentralized projects have to start somewhere centralized. So Martin and me, we basically put up a web page where we add a call to action uh, button and you can please join the process to create the decentralized science comes. You can fill in a questionnaire say how you want to contribute and I want to say this is just a very early phase so you can like change your dedication and commitment uh, later on if you do have the process more defined okay but just please join us and how should we do this we have some ideas obviously there should be a governance protocol earlier or later and we know the thing that we really know is that it, these high comments will be bold brave and really revolutionary yeah to what end? Well, to the betterment of humanity and to give a solid background for all future DSI funding. Maybe it's a 2% so that they can actually invest in science that is done in a good way and not in the old fashioned broken science way. And of course, to really break with the old science conduct. 
And how should we like create these guidelines? How should uh, how should we be led guided? Well, I think the first most important thing is common sense, reasoning, and first principle. Right? We don't need to have scientific studies to show that closed access journal publications are bad. Right? We don't need to have scientific studies to show that if you timestamp your Excel sheets every day, it's much harder to just like add some data at the end of a study. Right? You don't need to be open with your data, with your Excel sheets at all times, but it's just harder if you want to fake the data. I mean, but still, we should like be open for meta science or science about science and uh, creative comments, especially in the way of like how you how you distribute body among scientists, right? There are so many open questions, and these high comments could be a great aggregation place a knowledge hub of best practices and evidence-based scientific methods, right? So we could like give the future DSI funders some guidelines how to like decide on good ways how to actually distribute research money, yeah? Obviously, we're getting rid of unnecessary stakeholders and limitations. For example, why have librarians, why have publishers, right? We can like solve the problem copy editing in another way, right? Uh, how will the guidelines be enforced? Maybe through DSI funders. Imagine a DAO, research DAO says, I want to like fund a DSI Commons public good, some IP reserved project with this money. So all the apl applicants know that they have to like not have restricted patents or have open patents, for example, and so on. Or the community will like, review other projects, decide or say this is like adheres to the guidelines or not. And these are some sort of focus areas that we want to like come up with guidelines, for example, for grants, for how DAO's research DAO should work, on how you think about data sharing, publication, timestamping, and so on and so forth, how you invest in basic science, venture capital, how you deal with CSI, traditional science, centralized science, right? IP NFTs. Oh, okay, so I give you some examples of how these guidelines just to have like just to have a rough idea, right? So how should like a guideline regarding publications? How could it look like? Well, you obviously we will only support open access publications. And for DSI, you just publish one copy on a decentralized service like IPFS with a persistent paid for for at least five years. For example, this could be a guideline, right? Publish more often, publish updates, move away from one monolithic publication, right? Have you every month have an update sort of tweet that you publish on IPFS on the progress of your research project with all your timestamp data and so on. Yeah, for example, this could be, uh, there should be a high, reuse of text and figures and obviously it should all be cd by right and maybe we can move away from text as a scientific feed and just like think of text as a medium to convey scientific ideas and uh, restrict discussions about plagiarism just to like to like copy of scientific ideas and not of copy of like figures or text right this would be a nice thing so we could like save a lot of efforts on like uh, discussions about plagiarism, right? And uh, well, how could it look like a guideline for grants? Imagine you would just like publish or just like write a one page grant, yeah? You can like use links to like publish material methods. Uh, this would mean very little overhead. Where you need, you would need to have some signaling that you are able to like do this project, but it could be like your past project or some example work. And you don't need to like wrap everything up in the 30 pages grant application that will be rejected in 90% of the cases, right? So unnecessary work, okay? And then another idea would be, why don't we like include publications and reporting how you spend your money in one system, right? The publication could be a report on how you spend the grant money. So you don't have to like uh, spend Spend your time on like writing a report, a publication, all basically the same content, right? This would be, I think, could all be on chain, timestamped, right? Uh, how how could we how could a guideline regarding the infrastructure look like? So, for example, obviously we use not blockchains but large public blockchains. Yeah, store on decentralized services. Don't use servers like in Web 2.0. 
use open source and so on. How should translational research look like? Develop standard. Maybe we can like create something like safe uh, agreement on future equity. This used to like invest in early stage like uh, uh, startup companies. Maybe we can like do some example contracts that work in like several legislation on like how to invest in like early stage applicable research, maybe through an IP NFT, or we can like come up with guidelines how IP NFTs should give like 20% back to the funding agency as like a revenue stream to like fund more culture research. Come up with certain uh, blah, okay. Well, there are a lot of ideas and I'm looking forward to have your ideas and your chairs. So how do we do? Like DSI to like do DSI in a DSI way is cool. How we deal with uh, with scientists because there's no DSI institute yet, right? So basically, we had like one idea would be to have like two different kind of doing science: the green DSI way and maybe the gold DSI way. So in green, you still have can publish in all traditional science publications, but you still publish on decentralized services. And so a scientist can like live in both worlds and slightly um, uh, trans translate to DSI. Or you just like do gold DSI where you basically go full DSI. Or another thing, and we, we like this approach best at the moment is we, it's like, you know, when there's like creative commons, they have like CC by non-commercial or some rights reserved, right? So we can be, this could be like Lego building blocks of licenses to do like research in certain ways, right? So it's decentralized science project, public goods, and the only thing that you can do that you need to do is like cite the results. There will be no commercialization, no IP with all the advantages and disadvantages, right? There could be a decentralized science project that adheres to centralized science principles, it's still allowed for scientists to publish in traditional journals and some IP can be like for like commercialization and so and so on. We can like build basically building blocks for like, okay, you got the point. So, so I ask you to like join the decentralized commons on the web page and we, we look especially for people who have like a bridge knowledge, who know Web3 blockchain and know how to build platform, know how to do science, have some lawing, uh, uh, in, uh, law experiences, or maybe experiences with governance, creating guidelines, and so this will all be very valuable. So thank you very much for your attention, and this is the end of my talk. I just leave the web page up here. Okay. Thank you, Zürnke. Um, uh, there are some 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 comments I see uh, in the chat. I mean, uh, Yanni, for Eric, if you want to just voice them, uh, maybe. Yeah, and, uh, I would like to take them. Yeah. Thank okay. you. I'll uh, start. Yeah, I put a comment um, just in there that a lot of the structure of science is there yeah. for relatively good reasons. Uh, the lack of uh, community control over possible science uh, allows for people to move against community, uh, such that like someone studying something in an armpit somewhere nobody has ever heard of, doing something that most people have no idea about, sci the scientific process permits its existence, which is the purpose of the scientific process. So lots of pure stuff in that vein. I'm concerned about the morality of even decentralizing the manner in which it's conducted. Alternatively, okay, though, so, of course, anything so, industrial so, or applied makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, okay. okay. I, uh, yep. Buddy. So, Yannick, so you, oh, let, you let, mentioned... Let's Zunga, let's Zunga answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zunga. So Jan, if you you mentioned you 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 worried that it like becomes too far out and every crackpot can come up with a crazy idea and there's no uh, tunneling, no selection oh, no, process. No, complete inverse, complete inverse of that. Yeah, crackpot or crazy one. ideas are good things. That's what science. Oh, that yeah. what science as it currently is allows for, yeah. and that's what mm -hmm. we want it to do. Decentralization. Okay. Um, that takes away the crazy people because then there is less 
uh, particular authorities, but it's the group, the norm, which governs further creation. Ah, uh -huh. Good, I, interesting, I, I, interesting I, take. And if I want to oppose yeah. your opinion, okay. for example, decentralized science may probably have ill effects like, uh, so to say, legalizing or enabling astrology as a financed, financed field of science. But it is like economy, a usual economy. We don't want not to be riches. We want not to be poor. So uh, science uh, should be uh, decentralized, in my opinion. I don't mm -hmm. know, know how to yeah. explain it in more details. It, but it, it's, I mean, uh, science is already, yeah, science is already decentralized or centralized, right? It's decentralized to different institutes, different working groups, different nations. So it's it's a it's a kind of question of how do you find define decentralization, right? And like taking bringing decentralization together with like um converging towards the mean uh it's yeah maybe these are like two different things like the structural decentralization and the uh yeah yeah i think um the, maybe the, the the risk is that uh this um yeah if the, the 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 concept of the comments right or if you think of uh how currently for example, like things like Gitcoin are structured. These these are apparently mechanisms that are being tried out that are uh, yeah that are that are kind of pushing a certain direction and actually taking the agency it seems away from the individual crazy person, but putting it more more the mainstream stuff into the focus that that can be like shared easily on the internet and and social media, right? Uh, this is what gains traction, and I think this is not actually what we want and we could rather see i just share this here there's an article about um uh, from uh, uh the republic of of science uh, by michael polani who actually says that um the scientific process is one that is governed by the scientists them themselves and it shouldn't be influenced by any yeah. collectivist uh you know uh, or uh, even nation state approach um and I think yep. the the hope would be more to to make use of the power of the internet of of having those different crackpots connect, you know, uh, and 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 do their research um, yeah. in a way that is more permissionless than than having to go through all the hoops to join an institution and sit in that building that you need to get your title and your degree and your diploma to yeah. to access. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, so uh, Schwarze Katze or that yeah. So the these we are, we are carried away with the term decentralization somewhat, right? Because it's like before it was like all blockchain for science and research. Now it's called DeFi, just like DeFi, right? So yeah. it's uh, so basically with decentralized science, we mean creating science in a, with DAOs, with tokens, with IPFS, yeah. with IPFS, and we don't worry so much about the social structural decentralization yeah. as a completely yeah. institute. So we, have, we should like add a, add a slide on this, yeah? On that. Uh, Eric, yeah. Look, Eric needs to leave soon and he has a comment. Eric, go, go for it. Yeah. Uh, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Sorry to derail the discussion. This was a great one, but no, I do perfect, have to jump perfect. off in yeah. a second. Um, first off, I, I want to say I had not thought about the idea that licensing requirements may need to change to accommodate decentralized infrastructure and kind of norms in decentralized communities. So that's a really interesting point, and I would love to hear more discussion around it at some point. Um, probably needs careful and uh, well thought out deliberation. Um, and then, yeah, I guess the one question that I would love to see answered on the Telegram, as I'm gonna have to jump off, is why blockchain? Why does it have to be blockchain? What things can blockchain do that no federated database can possibly do? What things can decentralization do that the current academic system, which is to a certain extent decentralized on a more granular level, kind of community by community uh, can do? So it might yeah. be an interesting artifact coming out of this group as we're still in the formation and vision stages why blockchain why decentralization um, but with that being said 
I'm sorry, I can't wait for the responses, uh, but I do have to jump. That's fine. Thanks, y'all. We, we, we'll share yeah. the recording later. So, yeah. so uh, you answer this, please, and then and then we'll switch to Joshua because he... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I want to do like, something. I compl wait, completely wait, wait, wait. agree with Eric. There's nothing that a centralized service is like, let's add with like some sort of like wallet to sign transactions, yeah? So Eric missed on that, right? So if you have a centralized server with some wallets that you can sign some statement and state changes to the system, you don't need blockchain, right? And we completely, on a technical level, we agree with this. But the whole blockchain and DeSci and like all this whole thing, these are new narratives, no new values, no new cultures that are being created. And we can use this movement and attach the DeSci Commons guidelines on it and use this for us to basically change something in science, right? Uh, from a purely technological level, you wouldn't need Bitcoin if there would be a central entity or, or Ethereum, right? But still, it's a big field. You have developers coming out with DeFi protocols, with new platforms, with NFTs, with sort of new ideas, right? So they are the same they are changing DeFi, we can have finances, we can change science, right? Uh, Martin, I want to repeat what I told uh, to stress my point. You say that okay. influence of the community is harmful. It really can be harmful. For example, it can introduce astrology as a financed science. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think, uh, like, uh, who disagree with Lenin, say that we should make uh, people rich, no, we should make no poor rather than no rich. That astrology may become rich should not much bother us. It should bother mm -hmm. us, but not much. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, our main purpose to prevent fi fake fi false science, but to support legitimate Bible. Okay, great. Yeah, great. Thank you for Thank that. You um, a very quick response to Eric. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm in the Yeah, um, go for it. So, so you also brought this up in your presentation. And I'll be very brief, but it's the, the fact that we have the power to control money with blockchain. Blockchains are not a thing. They're a peer-to-peer -peer digital cash system. So the fact that we can mint currency, which was tried with a federated system and tried with a set, uh, centralized system before then, and control that currency is a very, very big thing. You cannot do that with anything except blockchain. Okay, great. This is what I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was hard to understand, but I think what you mentioned, what you said is that the NA, National Science Fund, uh, for example, they can't do these certain mechanisms and things that 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 we want to do or that we can do with blockchain, correct? We can, we can print money. No federated or central system can print money. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah, very exactly. simple yeah, primitive. Yeah. That's, I think, why the funding is the like the number one thing we can go for. And that yeah. Dunke mentioned, um, and then I hand over though to Joshua, right? Just uh, yep. what Zunke said also, I think the funding, uh, the ability of this current movement that can can really decide how the money is allocated is unique and has never been there. The open science movement has been co-opted uh, by publishers, you know? Yeah. Um, and it took decades until finally uh, governments took action and said, yeah, you have to have everything open access. This is like, taxpayer funded research there's been a lot of lobbying before by publishers to avoid this and now we can basically uh hopefully fund individuals that are going with this new paradigm you know and are going really um uh and are being empowered on the internet and this is why i think it's actually quite interesting to to really go into the fringes the fringe parts the long tail you know also with that said, and there's great comments, uh, I, I would like to invite Joshua now to share uh, his screen and, and speak. And and then if there's some time in the end, we can still have a discussion. Great, thank you. Um, before I show the, the talk about the DSI funding governance, I just want to say, based on that, um, this concept of sort of like, what is the optimal tokenomics, for example, or the optimal um, centralized entity in this decentralized ecosystem? Uh, I can't remember, Yaniv, I think your concern was, uh, what if we have the sort of the the um, consensus of the masses leading those on the outside to not even get a space at the table? I think that these concerns about um, this sort of direction that the decentralized community will take science in is kind of unfounded because the whole point in the decentralized community is that any direction can be taken. The, the, the technology itself allows anybody to, like as John said, mint their own currency or create their own governance techniques, um, create their own versions of a DeSci Commons standard. Yeah. 
know? and and this sort of like decentralized uh architecture that we're building is brand new especially in DeSci. and so there will be moments where you have your gitcoin who basically will control the narrative of public goods funding for however many years and maybe subsidiaries of gitcoin the, the gitcoin friends will also do the same thing and that's okay like they've done a service to the people that they've done a service to but those who are left on the outside at some point uh, will be picked up by other public goods funding protocols this is the size of this space is tiny in comparison to what it can be and probably will be and, and so when it grows it's going to be able to have many many directions it's going to be a multipolar world it's going to be a plural world the plurality thing is a big thing that a lot of a lot of the crypto crew uh sort of talk about all the time and just another thing that that book um move fast and break things uh, which was written about the the way that Google and Facebook and Microsoft basically monopolized the tech industry because what they did is they saw this new technology and they just made some stuff. They made some stuff that people used and it maybe it broke some things along the way, but now they're the incumbents, they're the monopolists, right? There is that cutthroat attitude to tech and tech innovation is going to continue across the whole world, uh, including in the decentralized space. And if truly decentralized participants like ourselves don't actually take the initiative to start creating these things, then those th that have the power to do so much quicker than us will do, and they will break things, and they will continue the monopoly of these things. So, um, I think that this this inertia in the space, especially in DeSci, is really quite damaging. And I don't think that the concept of oh, if we do a DeSci Commons, it's going to put it's going to stop all these other people on the outside from coming in. I think that would just be damaging to the movement in general. Like we could make a, a DeSci Commons two or a DSI uncommons or whatever you want, right? The idea is that just like put something in, put something out there so people can get behind it and we can actually start a decentralized movement. Um, on that, yep. I'm going to show you a uh, potential governance protocol for what you could consider um, the standards or the, the commons. So just briefly, uh, let me just, in fact, let me just stop that. So let me just briefly, um, the commons document that Sunko is, is mentioning, um, there's an aspect of it that was the gold and green standard of DSI. And, and that's the thing I'm particularly interested in, which is sort of DSI standards. Um, all industries across the world have a standards. Um, it's important that we do too, so that we can inspire confidence in those looking from the outside in, in particular in this group, the funders, right? It's important that we have funders who know what could be considered a high quality project and why they might be considered a high quality project. Um, and in order to do that, we have to have some kind of framework or some kind of guidelines. And the guidelines are, Sunka has a, a great version of them. Um, the the guidelines, uh, Sunka, if you can share your guidelines um, at some point, yeah, that would yeah. be great. These are just like very early ideas, right? So we, we, we are just starting the real serious attempt to have guidelines here, right? And I hope you sign up to the page, yeah? To the DSI Commons page. It was just like an early idea. I, I'm going to share it. Yeah, one second. Um, Martin, do you want a moment to respond to Yana's comment, or is your? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go, go for it. I, I really. Sure, I got it. Okay, so um, yeah, here is just a very basic framework of what uh, I'm working on this with a, a company called Q. They're a, a governance blockchain. They're an L2 EVM L2, and their entire purpose is to. Uh, is to provide a, a blockchain specific for governance. They have some really unique mechanics. One's called the, the root nodes, which basically allows, um, it's, an, it's a real world entity. You can actually elect your own root nodes. They have the ICC, the International Chamber of Commerce, because this is primarily- it's Joshua. The yes. font is not, uh, not seen form. Sorry? Yeah, font, maybe you can, uh, can you go into presentation mode or zoom it out? It's really hard to see. Is it? Okay. Uh, Yeah, like that, maybe you can. I can see it. Give me no, one second. good. Oh, it works. Did you move the left side, sidebar? Yeah, I removed the sidebar. I gotcha. How yeah, about that's now? That's better. That's better. Okay, good. Thing. Okay. So basically, it's a very simple DAO mechanism. It's your typical uh, proposer, propose a vote, your members vote on the vote, and then it's ratified. The key difference here is this concept of the root node, and the root node is a real-world KYC entity of which it's sort of like an arbitration court. Think of it like Kleros, but it's more centralized. Uh, you have these root nodes which are paid a dividend by Q themselves. It's their own sort of service. Um, and they have the ICC for International Chamber of Commerce for their DeFi uh, 
sort of root node intervention requirements. They have a number of other sort of high quality, what you could consider high quality uh, people. But the idea here is that you can fill the root node position with anything. So you could fill the root node position with people from the NIH, uh, from, from any of these organizations that you feel would be beneficial for the future of the adoption of DSI, they could actually be incentivized to become a root node. But the core point here is that you have uh, a DAO mechanism, which is incredibly transparent. It's cheap to use, it's powerful, it's optimized for governance. And what the sort of suggestion I had here is that you would have a constitution, uh, to be clear, this DAO governs a constitution and the upholding of that constitution. So here they've actually gone through and created the constitution for us as a, as a service, like they've, this is all created and real and the constitution exists. And it's a very simple constitution, it's, it's written in English law, and it's essentially saying that this DAO has the objective of upholding the constitution and the members of the DAO have certain requirements and responsibilities to determine that constitution and then uphold that constitution. The constitution itself is the thing that is flexible and the constitution is what we're, the proxy here is the uh, commons agreement, right? Which is the guidelines of what is a good standard of DSI. And essentially what we have here um, is an idea that there's a, a, a way to uh, to grade a project's ability to be a DSI project. Like, is are you giving it a mark based on a rubric of how decentralized is it? How transparent is it? Is its reporting? How is it publishing? Is it using is it using DSI native tools when it's publishing? Is it using uh, what blockchains are it's using? Is it using Ethereum, which is obviously highly decentralized and secure, or is it using you know a, an L2, which has just one set of multisigs? You know, these sorts of things, which you can actually create in this guidelines document a rubric, a scoring rubric, and then you have now a document of which you can compare uh, new projects against. The eventual idea here is that the new projects can fill out a form or be assessed through this process, and then at the end, they are issued a score or an NFT, like gold, green, gray, or 10 to 1 on the scale. And this is something that now belongs to them, and they can use that for putting on their website. Say we have the uh, DSI funding working group gold standard snap they put on their website or when people come to us so protocol labs for example they say we have a one billion dollar fund we want to give to DSI but you're the expert so who should we give it to and you say well here's a list of projects that have been graded by our ecosystem now this is one cent and Yanev I'm sure you might dislike this this is one effort at deter like trying to put some labeling trying to simplify and streamline the process so that people can actually interact with these decentralized protocols and trust them in an inherently trustless system but the idea of this is that the way that this is structured is that any number of guidelines can be issued so you could have the dci commons v1 and everybody can attest to that and then you can have the dci uncommons v1 that somebody else could create and that would also be fine and what you're having here is a plurality of certifications to say is this project doing DSI in a manner that we agree with? You can read the constitution and determine which one of these certifications you think is most valid, and then you can follow those attest attestations from there. <clears throat> so for me, this is a process by which, again, the inertia is damning, in my opinion, and we have to sort of just push on past the inertia. And pr the, the beauty of the decentralized system is that you can create governance mechanisms such that even if you make mistakes at the beginning, they can be rectified by the community, right? There's no way in a decentralized system such as this for any one participant or any one group to maintain control in perpetuity. And that's what this sort of governance flow is. <coughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> I, um, I have a, a, a number of suggestions about how this can be optimized and also suggestions about the, uh, the constitution itself. Um, and this is actually being done almost as a service by Q. It's a great use case for them because it's a very powerful project that we're doing and it's, it's based on legitimate needs. Um, and so they're giving us our full support, in, including writing the constitution, helping us to ratify it legally, including helping us to recruit root nodes that we believe are actually valuable, and also giving us grants as well to seed the treasury so that if uh, somebody, for example, is working on this on a part-time basis, they can actually receive an incentive for doing so. And basically what, we, what I would like to see um, <clears throat> because this is already done, right? I did this as a use case with them. Uh, what I would like to see would be uh, some kind of, how do I say, some kind of backing from this as a concept and us to work together as a working group, in particular those that are interested in the funding uh, standards, in the standards aspect, work together to de determine some kind of constitution, some kind of guidelines framework. It could be various, it could be multipolar. 
Um, and we actually also at DSI World, which is the project I'm from, uh, we actually are also creating AI evaluators, which will basically allow you to have a rubric of this is the guideline, and then it will have a form that a project who wants to have be assessed could fill out, and there'll be an AI that essentially grades you according to its rubric and then according to the answers. And that would essentially streamline the process massively. It will keep it transparent also, because you could determine the inputs on both sides. Um, but what this is, is a way for humans to come in and govern this protocol, but in a fair and transparent way. You have essentially two core player, uh, key players on the on our side, which is uh, the projects coming in, and then the DAO members. I've put it here as ethics, but call it standards. Um, the, the, the standards DAO members, and then you have two tiers of membership. You have the average member, the general member, and then you have the expert panel. And the expert panel uh, is most likely going to be a sort of incentivized position, and then the, the other DAO members probably less so. And even and in here in the constitution, I'll just find it quickly. You have here the expert panel. So uh, members of the expert panel may and such things. Their responsibilities are as such here. And the idea here is that you have a very clearly defined legal framework, which is actually ratified by law. And then you follow that. And then you have this decentralized participation framework where you can have multiple different standards, multiple different signals. And then at the end, you issue, this becomes an issuing authority, not the issuing authority, but an issuing authority uh, for these ratings of which people can use to then fund. Just like Gitcoin did the public goods funding thing first, and now they monopolize the whole thing, and we retroactively, we can see that actually and wouldn't want to do that ourselves. Um, but they did it, and it's successful. They've, did, they've given out you know over $100 million in public goods funding to really genuinely good causes. So for better or worse, they did it, and it works, and now they've funded a lot of public good stuff. So if we actually want to fund science, we have to have some of these frameworks and we have to spin them up because, you know, we're a group of people who get together and have these ideas, but like who's going to trust us as individuals? Well, now you don't have to trust because you have a natural governance mechanism. And so that's what I'm sort of bringing to this table. I've been working on this for six months or so now. I did actually nearly two years. I've been trying to get this together, but properly for six months. Um, and this is a, the perfect group of people to get get involved with it. So I'd just like to hear everybody's thoughts on that if you if you're interested. Thank you very much, Joshua. Anyone that wants to to comment on this first? To come what? On the on Joshua's uh, do you, any any ideas? Uh, Joshua, yeah. is your uh, system for uh, administrative decisions only, or for publishing a particular article too? a particular manuscript so the manuscript is is in itself not governed the, the manuscript changes to the manuscript or the constitution that is governed by the dao but what is actually within it is not of, not of concern you my question i'm asking about scientific manuscripts uh, sent for a peer review is your system also for a peer review i don't think it is suited for peer review well no, it's, it's it's really got nothing to do with the produce of science. It's only to do with the governance of these badges, as you might might call them, these mm -hmm. certifications. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is a great idea. I mean, start. I mean, let's do it. Let's let's work at this group. Let's work in group. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. Uh, I, yeah. There's a question here, Schwarze Katze. How, so, how is this? How is this different? Um, yeah, Zuke, go ahead. Oh, no. oh, okay. So, um, so I is it, is it can it also be moved, be used to monitor science project whether I adhere to the badges or protocols or E6? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you could push into somewhere into the into the constitution that part, the members of the expert panel would do a periodic review to see if they're maintaining okay. that. That would be easily easy to do. You could have a decaying NFT, so you issue the NFT to the project and it decays over three okay, months. Cool. That's nice. And, and again, yeah. with the AI as it is, and we actually are developing a system for this, and it's kind of yeah, I like this. Yeah, that cool. could be done on an automated basis, you know. Mm -hmm. Ma Ma Manuel, uh, you 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 raised your hand. Yes, sir. Hi, I hope you can Hi. hear me. My internet connection is a little bad. Um, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed your presentation, Josh. Thanks for this. Um, I was also in touch with Nemo of Q Network. Uh, working on some form of governance framework for DSA for quite a while now. And I think 
uh, this can pretty much play out as like a DAO of DAO concept where we can collectively govern the whole ecosystem to grow. Um, this is in particular interesting for everything related to also uh, the flow of funds. So not only like giving away certificates, but also collectively govern between like different DSI DAOs, what we want to do when there's a certain amount of money raised. So for example, giving it away on a request for grants and having like a due diligence screening process or kickstarting some of these quadrating funds uh, together with Gitcoin, for example. And, you know, there, there are a variety of reasons why this can be applicable and useful for us. So uh, I would I would say let's definitely schedule another call for this because, yeah, what, what I'm doing right now is like, yeah, again, setting up the whole DSI grants round on Gitcoin with like a variety of other um, people as well. And what's missing right now is like a long term uh, compliant way to distribute mm -hmm. those funds. We are exploring with different uh, free trade zones where we could possibly register a variety of um, of institutions as well to collectively govern the funds. But yes, yeah, still there's the governance in, in, in place, right, to make decisions. So mm -hmm. I think right now um, the best thing that we could do is having this DAO of DAO governance framework where we can collectively own um you know the decision making process in which direction we are growing the ecosystem while also staying legally compliant with like a, an alliance for example between different DSI DAOs DSI entities um that actively participate in this process so uh Which these were like the two two things sense that I wanted to bring in here because this is like highly in line with what you just said and I'm looking forward to um actually getting hands on with this process in the next two to three weeks so there's some level of urgency um yeah. so yeah just wanted to bring this up again in this group here to, to be clear to that point sorry i know everyone's got their hand up but this is very important to be clear um i would not advocate at any point for a centralized control yeah, centralized decentralized of a group control of the funds themselves um, I would actually suggest that this process would allow a certification which would allow the funders to directly fund those that they think are most valid. I think us as a collective holding the funds is a, would be a big mistake. Mm. It would put too mm. much pressure on us and, and that would open us up to some kind of attack of people being like, these guys, who are these guys? Like, yeah. that, Maybe just, just to, uh, we have uh, Yaniv and then also Victor, just one a comment on this. I think how this can be structured is really that there is hopefully disagreement on, on on many of these topics and therefore a plurality of different paths that can be taken. These like comments, for example, can write up one type of uh, standard recommendation that can be used by what Joshua proposed here. And then there can be others that say, well, we don't agree with it. We don't want to do it this way. We change it. And what will be very important yeah. is that all of these things are kind of recorded and within this ecosystem and maybe this working group. So we can see also how these different branches are are, are operating right um can I, can you directly yeah. uh, add okay. something to to joshua's yeah. point here mm -hmm. okay and then Yanif. yeah yeah be, because i just wanted to say that you know whether or not we have like a system in place for example like in a framework of a b2b DAO to collectively decide in which direction we want to grow the ecosystem there will be like a handful of people who govern funds either with a token sale or with governmental money and you know they can pretty much decide if they want to spend the money on their own research projects in their own ecosystem or you know be open enough to support the newcomers of our ecosystem to thrive and you know personally i think this whole concept around ecosystem governance and b2b DAOs is pretty interesting when it comes to ecosystem governance in a way um, but yeah, this whole topic around, yeah, who's owning the funds, where are they coming from? For sure, I know, uh, and I see some blockers there, but you know, this is what's happening anyways. And I would love to see a future where instead of having like five stewards for, uh, you know, a DSI round on Gitcoin, for example, raising, you know, hundreds of K uh, for general ecosystem growth, I think it can be like pretty much uh, more useful to have it like in the hands of, yeah, the majority of the organizations and institutions that are already working in decentralized science and you know creating positive impact for society to change and building out the tools so that we can better secure all this stuff and for sure also the funding distribution mechanisms to make it a lot more democratic in a way so yeah 
thank you. Yeah, great. Yanif, you, you have been raising your hand. Yeah. Um, so one, I, I, I keep uh, pointing out negatives or asking negatives, but what sort of elements of defensibility of the system have been tried to be introduced here? Because uh, I, I've, I've been posting in the chat, anything which is too decentralized is generally af after some time that just makes it very easy to be taken over. Uh, so I, I, like you say, there is a capacity for the group to uh, update the constitution. Then that sounds to me like some sort of malicious or over dominant actor has the capacity to affect the constitution in a way which uh, best supports themselves, or perhaps less uh, conspiratorially, uh, the constitutional governance of the system that you're building, Josh um it tends towards the most basic form which then becomes the one which is easiest to uh overtake uh, purely by statistical movement yes so it's important to understand so schwartz accounts so this also answers your question which i was typing out um this is essentially no different in many ways to a traditional dao governance model it's just on-chain governance but the two difficult the two very specific things that the q blockchain offers here is these root nodes and the constitution framework right so the constitution framework will yanev as you say uh optimize for the, the simplest sort of um container of it, like the simplest way to to interpret the constitution which is these members must abide by the constitution, uh, by the supporting document, sorry, I've been misusing the word, the supporting document, which will be the guidelines. The constitution says that we must uphold the supporting, uh, must obey, oh, you know, obey, obey the supporting document, and the constitution is set in stone. And so there are guidelines, Yanev, I'm very happy to send you the constitution as it exists right now, because it's quite, <clears throat> it's simple and it's good. And it will allay a lot of your fears about the potential for governance attack because there are some fundamental things that the constitution can be built on which is that that would if it decided to eventually become uh, if someone decided to try and uh, attack the governance which would be a, a, a difficult process in itself but it could it is possible then the constitution would essentially revert back to an uh, 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 would would revert the decision because it, it would go against the fundamental of the constitution mm. which is to uphold the guidelines and there is and especially with also the root nodes here as well which is an actual real world kyc identity which does get arbitration um sort of say at the end of all of this should they need to the idea here is that you're not engaging the root nodes for any decisions at all except those that are absolutely mandatory that such as for example potential governance attack the issuance of any nfts or anything like that would not be a root node decision I'll share with you the constitution though, Vienna, because I think it will allay some of your fears. Um, and Schwarzer Katz said, just an, again, this is a pretty standard governance mechanism with a few caveats of the constitution and the root nodes, which are great, um, in my opinion, for science in particular, because people are a bit finicky and a bit more risk averse. Um, but it's more the use case of it, which is to, and I planned this before I ever heard of Q, this DSI ethics DAO, which is to issue some kind of certification in a decentralized manner, multiple potential certifications with multiple potential guidelines, right? Um, issue a certification that people can use as signaling when they engage in DSI, because there's going to be a lot of crap in DSI. There's going to be a lot of scams in DSI. There's going to be a lot of science, which is bad science or dangerous science. And for people to have to not, mm -hmm. not be able to sift through that without any kind of standardization, uh, it's going to destroy the space's reputation. Yeah. Right. Uh, Great, uh, Victor. Uh, you, me? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Joshua, I have a note and a question. A note, I think uh, the DAO is best to be done using colony framework. It's uh, probably the only sane framework without dependency hell. Uh, do you know what is dependency hell or no? Dependency hell is when it's uh, hard to impossible to install a software because of its dependencies to other software that is not handled properly. And uh, colony is without dependency hell, unlike other systems. Uh, I'm working on a carbon accounting project. I tried it to do with different different DAOs, DAO toolkits, and I'm almost so succeeded with, uh, namely, colony. And question, do you have an existing DAO that can be used for this purpose as uh, the, this uh, holder of this constitution and framework? So, yes, I have the constitution. I'm going to share it in the group chat. No, uh, do you have an existing DAO uh, registered in the blockchain network DAO that you can use uh, for this project or it's only to appear? 
uh, this Edisa Ethics DAO has actually been launched and it, it has actually been launched and ratified by that constitution. However, it's not active and it was done as an MVP at a conference. Mm, okay. So we would probably relaunch it with with different parameters or maybe not. I don't know. I, by the way, this is not me building it. I'm working through DSI World with Q. Q is the company doing it. They're very well capitalized. They have a lot of reputation. Um, they have great resources. And I think that they are the kind of company that would actually help this sort of thing get off the ground. And as much as philosophizing about it in group chats is 100% necessary, there has to be some kind of action. And I think that they would be the kind of people that would put that into action because it's a use case for their blockchain. Yeah. Right? It's in their own incentive. Please type the URL of your, of your DAO in the chat. Q.org. Josh, Josh, sorry. Um, good construction and uh, faith that's gone, which is why it's all mocked. But uh, to that point of doing action, what and I'm here to do work at a working group. What are next steps? And then I do have a question about uh, attestation, but that can be offline. Uh, the, ne the next steps for this would be in would be for myself, Sunka, Martin, and anybody else that's interested to really figure out that guideline because the go the governance framework, the technicalities, the constitution, everything is done. All we need now is the supporting document, which is the what is good DSI. The AI judge, also we need to develop that, but that's actually quite simple code. Um, but what's the most difficult part is agreeing on a rubric of how to grade a project for good DSI. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, awesome. And to get involved with that, that's what Zonko was talking about. Yeah, join here, yeah. I posted the link so everybody is welcome to like contribute on whatever level, yeah. Tech governance ideas so and yeah perfect thank you please, so please share it please share it to other people and, yeah 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 so in the interest of time and because uh, um some people have already dropped out of the call I, this has been a really nice uh, hour uh, and really great discussions thank you very much um i i close this here i invite you again uh, to join the telegram uh, where we can have follow-up discussions there has these different groups that have been established also if you want to um uh comment there on specifics uh we can take it from there and and there has been also a comment before on that telegram is really not the best place to collaborate and if we have things to follow up there's two ways how i see this can go last time we had some people already that were putting their names and this is all in the invite these documents are linked um they have all uh, like some people committed to different groups so one way to go obviously is that those people that are interested to take on a specific topic that they can start um creating um, um subgroups chats uh, invite people to share documents and so on this can be all coordinated for the moment through the telegram group and then next month we have a call that i have mentioned in the beginning an open call for research basically on this topic of um uh collaborative online platforms there's already a lot of, of them existing and and this is a, a key for these side i think that people can meet on the web and collaborate online on on projects i'd like to see ideally two or three of those um or someone that has done some more deep research on those different platforms that are existing on the on on the success and also the failures of those to present and that will be the, uh, the the main topic of next month's call. And also in the Telegram group, we can take it from there and discuss what are the lineups uh, for the next uh, next month to come. Um, from there, I guess we can also decide more how we can make sure that things are getting going, getting like Joshua's idea now is getting traction and we're moving on. Um, and then uh, maybe we can also decide better in the future what type of um, you know results we want to present beyond beyond you know pushing individual projects. Maybe we can uh, define this in the next weeks. Yeah. With that said, I, I, I close it. Um, Victor, anything quick? I want to ask everybody an advice, but because after from everybody, I think it's not quick. Sorry. I, didn't I want to, to ask everybody for an advice, but because several people may answer, it's not clear. So okay, yeah, next time. Victor, let's do it next time. Um, I feel also I, I checked the channel. I, I've seen from the chat there was not really anyone else that um, that 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 wanted to really um, like, for example, share a project update. I think we have this topical course from now on, 
and then uh, if you if you really feel that we could uh, should change the structure of this uh, working group calls let me know as well you know we are really open to to have a very inclusive process but with that said i i stop here because also for those that couldn't join or had to leave it's unfair if we stay like half an hour too long now so it will be recorded we'll share the recording or at least the presentation part of the recording okay thank you very much and uh wish you a good evening or day thank you martin yeah see you guys bye bye see you bye, bye.